Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to series. Today we're going to be talking about a new discovery that we kind of always suspected but never really could confirm that this beautiful rock, also previously known as a planet, was actually once full of liquid water. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So Ceres is actually the largest known asteroid to us located in the asteroid belt. This object is very, very, very large. Its uh, diameter is close to about a thousand kilometers. In other words, if it, would, uh, if it were to collide with planet Earth, this would probably not help us very much. And today we're going to be talking about a new discovery that sheds a little bit of light about its surface and about its internal structure as well, but most importantly about its past. Now, so first of all, let me actually show you where you can learn more about Ceres and the mission to Ceres uh, by clicking this right here. So this is Eyes on the Solar System, a free app by uh, NASA. This is called NASA's Eyes uh, Visualization. And it kind of shows you the probe known as Dawn and basically tells you a little bit more about the probe and what it's discovered in the past, uh, I believe it's seven or so years. It was launched in 2010. Originally, this probe um, was actually orbiting around Vesta, and then it changed its orbit using the ionic drive that's somewhere in the back here. And using this ionic drive, it was able to actually change the orbit, and now it orbits around um, Ceres. And it's going to stay here until at least 2018, possibly even longer. Now, interestingly, you can actually click the advanced uh, mode here and you can actually see, well, first of all, you can see other probes, but most importantly, you can go and go to series by double clicking on it and you can see what it looks like and what we've discovered about it and even look at the orbit of the probe, uh, probe uh, that as it orbits, as it orbits around series that's right there. And here it's, this is actually where it currently is located. So you can kind of, if you want to go back in time and uh, run the simulation and even discover some of the pictures that it's actually taken by clicking the pictures in the simulation that will help you discover quite a lot of really cool um, media that NASA has made for series. Now, okay, so this is how we studied it and this is how we basically discovered all of this stuff about series. And essentially, this is what we know about it. This is yet another simulation, and this is by Ian Webster, a person that makes these really cool simulations, and this shows you the uh, geography of Ceres, including the names and craters and mountains and so on. So I, I posted the link for this in the description. You can check it out. It kind of gives you a pretty cool demonstration of what we know about Ceres right now. So what we've discovered is pretty cool. First of all, Having looked at the geography of this beautiful object, uh, we realized that it seems that uh, the surface features here show us that it used to have quite a lot of liquid water in the past. As a matter of fact, it may have contained a very large, possibly even global liquid ocean. And we know this because the surface of Ceres is covered with so-called uh, water-bearing min minerals that are normally only present in water conditions. Now, this means that this whole object once looked kind of like this. It was basically a water world, possibly with some mountains here and there. So we can kind of demonstrate this by changing the topography of the object by basically reducing some water here and adding some silicates. So you may have had a few mountains here and there kind of looked like this. And this is what we think it looked like billions of years ago. And then over time, Something happened in the solar system, things got a little bit cooler, it possibly lost its atmospheric layer that was creating the liquid water, and then it became what it is today. It basically changed to the point where now it looks like this, like a dry, icy world. But nevertheless, it has quite a lot of interesting features. And first of all, it actually has three uh, very large craters. And you can kind of see them if I if I really spin this a little bit faster. You'll you'll see there's a lot of craters, but three of them are very unusual, uh, and they're called um, Axator, Kerwan, and Yalodul. And the craters are here, here, and here. These three large craters 
are essentially an indication of uh, previous geological activity. It also has a large mountain called Ahuna Mons, and there's a lot of other geological activity that indicates that not only was this a water world, but it also was geologically active, probably had a lot of cryovolcanism, um, a lot of all kinds of geological activity that makes it very, very similar to what our own beautiful planet Earth is today. So it's very possible that it wasn't really far off in terms of the appearance back billions and hundreds of millions of years ago. Okay, more like several billions years ago because it's very likely that this hasn't really looked like this for quite some time now. But it's possible that there was there were some features that looked very similar to this. And this is of course billions of years ago, but in the beginning of the solar system it may have actually been like this. And the team studying this also realized that the inside of Ceres probably looks something like this right now. So there is a kind of a crust layer on top here. There's probably the liquid ocean underneath and there's more rocky stuff in the middle. But it's really interesting what forms this outer crust. As a matter of fact, it's not ISIS. It's not actually even just regular rocks. It's something very unusual that contains these very unusual molecules known as uh, clathrate hydrates. These are basically water ice that has a kind of a gas molecule on the inside. And what this creates is a very, very light, very dense, yet super strong material that's like thousands of times stronger than actual ice. And what we think today is that Ceres is actually mostly made up of this stuff because we've already discovered a lot of it on the surface. And the way we think that this material formed is from when Ceres was basically a water world, as the water started to solidify, it started to absorb some of the gas into it and created this uh, very unusual structure known as clathrate hydrate. And by the time the whole surface was basically just ice, it actually had a lot of gas on the inside of it as well and formed this really hard structure that made the object as hard as it is today, basically making it very stable, very rigid, yet very 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 light it's not very dense at all as a matter of fact the density here is only about a double of density of pure ice and what this of course suggests is that well first of all one of the cooler things we can now study about series by using the dawn mission is we can try to detect what kind of gas it, it hides inside the ice as the ice evaporates from the planet as a matter of fact in 2018 we think a lot of the gas will actually leave uh, the uh, asteroid surface. I keep calling it a planet. It's not really a planet. It used to be a planet hundreds of years ago. Today, we, we're just considered to be a dwarf planet. But you know what? Old habits die hard. Anyway, so uh, the actual um, ice as it evaporates will release some of the gas and we'll be able to see what kind of atmosphere Ceres used to have. And as this gas evaporates, it also, uh, also creates a kind of a very, very thin atmospheric layer around the object which is something that we want to study as well. But most importantly, because we now know that this is the structure that exists on the surface, maybe just maybe this is how one day we could possibly even colonize it, potentially creating an atmosphere on it. So if we were to kind of melt some of the ice and find a way to maintain the actual stability of the atmosphere, we could probably create something that will be habitable, something that might actually create a world for us uh, that where we can not only live and survive, but actually live normally and flourish as a human being species. Anyway, so that's kind of all very interesting, but uh, obviously creates a lot more questions, not uh, excluding questions like what other objects actually had these types of structures, and most importantly, was there actual life on this object as well? All of this will one day be answered, but for now, that's all we know about Ceres, and that's all I'm going to mention about it as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's escape Ceres in Space Engine, and goodbye Ceres. Hopefully one day we'll discover your other secrets as well. Space out, guys, and as always... Bye-bye.